Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about the Unity level as well as the Ascension Stones and the Radiant Stones. So first of all, you're going to notice that I'm currently locked out of cold storage, so I can't go back in. However, you can unlock it by using one of these heaven mandates or cold storage reset tokens. So since the game has given me one every single day, I am able to reset cold storage. So you press P to open up this menu, you go to the dungeons tab, and you scroll down and you find cold storage. So I found cold storage over here, I'm going to click reset. It's going to say, are you sure you want to reset? And I say yes. And bam, the door is unlocked. However, you cannot redo the quest. Like, the quest is still complete, so you can't get another 13 gold or so. So you have to just go in normally to kill the boss. Alright, now I'm back into cold storage. So I'm going to kill Winter Main now so that the merchant can spawn. And then we will talk about the stones. So I'll be right back. So after you kill Winter Main over here, you're going to pick up the chest. And you're going to get these frozen feathers. You're going to pick those up. And you're going to come to the merchant over here. You also get some from the dynamic reward, you also get two. And once you talk to the merchant over here, you're going to notice that there are brilliant ore chests as well as brilliant radiant stone chests. So you can see the price difference is double, so 10 for the brilliant ore and 5 for the brilliant radiance. So which one should you be buying first? I recommend buying the brilliant ore chest first. And the main reason is because when you press Control H, you'll bring up your unity level, and then when you go to evolve over here, you'll be able to see these stones. So the expensive ones are these ascension stones. In order to get them, you have to buy the expensive chest. And the main reason why I like the big ones or the more expensive ones is because they have skill modifiers. So you can see over here that this earthen ascension stone, it gives me flying nettle damage by plus 1%. And I can increase this up to 3% depending on what tier it is. So the orange tier, which is like the legendary tier, is the one that gives me the highest percentage. So these are the small ones. Radiant stones don't give anything other than raw stats. And the stats that they roll are totally random and it's RNG. While the ascension stones, the stats are fixed. However, the skill modifiers that they can roll are random. So you can see here for the summoner, it's Doom and Bloom, Flying Nettles, and Rumble Queen. These are the three different skill modifiers that they can roll. So, for example, I use Flying Nettles a lot as I am an Earth Summoner. So I can roll Flying Nettles on the blue one and I can also roll Flying Nettles on the yellow one. However, you can see over here the color of Earthen Ascension Stone. It's currently blue, which means that is just the regular rarity. It can also roll purple and then finally it can also roll legendary, which is uh, orange, I believe. Depending on the rarity, the stats will vary as well. So Flying Nettles damage increased by 1% because this is the blue colored one. If I upgrade it to a purple, it'll give me 2%. And if I get it to legendary, it'll give me 3%. So if I get 3% on each one, that increases my Flying Nettle damage by 9%, which is extremely, extremely useful. However, again, this is very end game because the cost in order to get there is very expensive. Why do I say that? Look, I will unequip these and I'll go Refine Splendor. So when you Refine Splendor, you can put all the big gems together, and you'll see by putting all three of these big stones together, it's giving me a normal chance to get a superior, which is a blue one. It has a higher chance of giving me a heroic, but it still has a very low chance of getting a legendary or the orange tier. Only the legendary tiers give up to 3%. And you can also see here that the chances of rolling a stellar radiant stone or an earthen radiant stone or a life radiant stone is all 33% because I've put three different colors. However, let's say that I want the red color stone or the earthen ascension stone. What I would want to do in order to guarantee that I get a red one is put all reds so I can put up to eight earthen ascension stones and if I do that then it's guaranteed to give me an earthen ascension stone however the chances of giving a legendary will still be pretty low I believe I haven't actually tried having eight because you can see here I don't have that many ascension stones so uh, I need to find out later on but basically that's how you level up your gem and as for the earthen radiant stones the radiant stones are random However, you unlock more slots as you level up. And the more slots you unlock, the more gems you should socket. Because the more gems you put, the more set effects you get. So you can see at the moment, I have 100 points on set effects. So I've got 8 attack power and 7,788 HP. 
However, if I get to 120, I'll gain an extra 2 AP and a bunch of health. So I'm going to do that right now since I have the frozen feathers. So I'm going to buy two of these brilliant radiant stone chests. So you can see that I bought two. And now I can buy keys. So there's stellar key, earthen key, and life key. So I'm going to buy one stellar key and one life key, mainly because I already have an earthen um, jewel in my slots. So I'm going to buy one of these and I'm going to buy one of that. Now I'm going to open this. I'm going to use the stellar key to open one. Boom. And then I'm going to use my life key to open the other and boom so now i've got two of these gems i'm gonna press h put them here and now i can put them back in so you see the yellow one over here this has given me 95 piercing as well as 95 mystic damage as for the blue one over here this is giving me 134 defense and six attack power however again these stats are totally random so buying the small ones you're basically praying to rng and hoping that you get something good so you can see there that each gem that I put in gave me an extra 20 points. So now I'm up to 140 of the set effect, which is giving me 11 AP as well as 10,000 HP. So basically you just want to fill up the slots as much as you can if you are free to play player with whatever you can get to begin with. And when all these slots are filled up and you start having extras, then start refining. The more important ones are going to be the big ones because the big stones are the ones with skill multipliers while these are just flat stats. Um, I'm going to jump over now to an Excel spreadsheet that Momo sent me. Thank you very much, Momo. And the Excel sheet explains every skill modifier that you can get with the big stones for every single class. And sorry that I have a really stuffy nose. I'm a little bit under the weather, but um, let's check it out. So this is what the sheet looks like. Don't mind the Russian. The English translation is on the right side. So what we're going to do is jump straight to summoner because I play a summoner. So you can see over here that they can roll different affixes. So for example, flying nettles. For the blue gem, I can roll flying nettles, which can give me 1%, which is the one that I have at the moment. However, when I upgrade it to a purple one, it'll give me 2% of flying nettle damage. And if I get it to legendary, it'll give me 3%. You can also roll doom and bloom as well as rumble queen damage, depending on what you need. However, as an earth summoner, I don't use doom and bloom anymore because I deactivated it. As well as Rumble Queen, I don't really use this much except for like the initial burst. However, if you do like to have that crazy burst at the beginning, you could just spec into Rumble Queen. So in my opinion, I think that going Flying Nettles is the best. Just go Flying Nettles for your blue gem, going Flying Nettles for your red gem, and going Flying Nettles on your yellow gem. So by doing that, essentially, if you get everything at maxed out or legendary tier, you'll be able to have 9% extra damage with flying nettles so this is the one for summoner they've got every class over here including blade master warden gunner and stuff like that so this spreadsheet will be linked in the description below so you guys can go there and take a look and see what skill modifier is best for you and yeah that basically explains the unity system it's a very nice system mainly because the unity system is free to play it's basically it's a very free to play friendly thing as well as the higher the unity rank the higher your stats are and keep in mind that these stats are account wide so this 7000 hp that i get i get this to all my characters so this is very nice this defense the critical the mystic damage the ap all of these are shared among all my characters so it's very beneficial to work on your unity rank to make sure that it's as high as possible however the stones over here this is not account wide this is bound to your character because for example if i have a red stone over here like this earthen ascension stone fly nettles damage increased by one percent when i log on to my gunner this page will be empty there will be no gems here i'll still have the empty slots because of my unity rank however i will not have any gems here and then for each specific character i will need to purchase gems and to insert them into the corresponding slots in order to gain the set bonus and set effects so just keep that in mind However, overall, I'm very happy with the system. It gives a lot of endgame players a lot of incentive to help out new players, mainly because you want to grind out the Unity rank. And in order to get this reputation, you want to do as many dungeons as, as possible. So for in my case, I'm more than happy to help other players now on F8, doing Nehru Sanctum, doing all these other dungeons from Starstone Mines downwards, mainly because now there's an incentive to do them. And I'm not doing it for the gold, because they've nerfed the gold down to the ground. 
but at least I'm getting this reputation, which is something. But yeah, overall, I quite like the Awakening patch. It's given me a lot of things to do, a lot of things to grind for, and I'm having a lot of fun doing it. But yeah, that's really all I wanted to talk about in this video. But if this video helped, I would appreciate a subscribe as it really does help out my channel. And as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye. What can I say except you're welcome?